Hello everyone, Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today I'm here for my breakdown on Stain. Now this is a bit random, but I um, took him into training mode earlier today and played a bunch of online ranked matches. He's actually really strong. People say he's low tier, but... They, I don't know. They're dumb. He's so strong, he's really good space control with like his teleport moves, his like, lunge moves, and he's such a classic like swordsman character like, in fighting games. He has really cool combos that he can extend with his quirk buttons and make him look really unique compared to other characters. And yeah, he's just really fun. So let's get into his buttons. So, his regular attack string is this 4 hitting attack string. You can dash cancel after any point or cancel into quirks. Usually you're not going to dash cancel because you're not going to get that much off of it. You can cancel the last hit into something like this quirk 1 and then dash cancel after that if you want to extend combos this way. This isn't any kind of optimal combo, but it's just showing that it can be extended off of that, and you'll get decent damage. His air attack is this two-hitting attack string, which seems kind of bad, but it actually puts him in the perfect position to um, it's used to extend combos with um, some of his other quirk buttons, like this one. So it is actually really good and has a lot of use in his moveset. And it's, as you saw there, even from this distance, it's very good at getting wall splats, even though it doesn't seem like it sends them flying that fast. So yeah, it's very good. And if you see that you're facing a wall, you can just end your combo early and let them fly into the wall, so you can get some extended combos. Okay, his yellow attack is this upward slice that you can combo into. I believe so. Yeah, there we go. And you don't get anything off of, off of it for free, so you have to dash cancel because all of your quirk buttons miss at that angle. But you know, it's a good way to extend your combos if you want. It's very similar to some of his other types of combo extenders, but usually when you're that high in the air, a lot of his um, combos mess up. So you're not going to be using it that often. You know, it's another option and it works well as a yellow attack. It's pretty fast as well. His air yellow attack is this interesting slice. It looks like it does really low damage when you're on the ground, and it does. But its main use is for when you're in the air and being used as a yellow attack, because then it does a lot of damage because it has a multi-hit effect as you go down, kind of like Aizawa's. But it is a lot lower damage than you would get from some of his other combo enders, so I don't find myself using it that much. See, that did even more damage on its own. So yeah, the air one is not something you're going to be using that often. Okay. Oopsie. Actually, um, yeah, just, just to um, <laughs> fix what I said, I'm, it can be used to combo into his puzzle. Um, anyways, his quirk one is this projectile that is seemingly kind of bad, especially the first hit. It has a good spread, but it does like 500 damage, which isn't that good for a projectile. <laughs> it's pretty bad, but if you're up close, it does more damage. And it has a decent spread, so if they're trying to walk away, a lot of time it catches them. But that's not its main use, guys. It's just, he's not a zoning character, but it just gives him something to do from a distance. But he can press it multiple times, so if you press it once, it does this. If you press it a second time, he puts out this other knife that sticks on the opponent and kind of glows. And if you press it again, he'll actually teleport to the glowing knife. So if I press it three times, I teleport to the opponent. And this can be used to extend combos in the air like this. Like that. Um, because of the teleport, it allows him to extend off of it. If the opponent is running around and you miss, and the, um, like the glowing knife misses, you can see it hit the wall instead of up go. I'll actually teleport to the wall. So you always teleport to where the knife ends up. Which is really interesting. Like if you're trying to zone your opponent out and see like I'm over here and they're trying to like run away and I can like sneak up behind them and like if I landed on a wall or something. So it can be really good for that. And also, if you happen to hit them like this and the, kni the knife is just on them, it can be used to give him a bit of a loop on the ground so he can redo his attack string because you teleported to him. So see if I have a knife on him. I can do three attacks, do the teleport, and three attacks again, and it kind of gives him a mini loop. That's not the crappy infinite that I hate, you know, where you do the sidestep and then attack you. <clears throat> um, and yeah, his quirk one is the same in the air, except he throws them all at the opponent, so it does more damage usually. 
because he feels them more aligned, but it's still not going to do that much damage. There's no, I definitely wouldn't call him a zoner, it just gives him a bit of counter zoning and something to do from a distance, which is really good because a lot of characters don't have that. Okay, his tilt quirk one is this very swordsman-like just heavy slash. Yeah, an overhead slash, you can combo into it pretty easily and you can combo out of it with his um, quirk one. So it's actually going to be one of your main combo extenders, so if you do three hits into it and then into your quirk one, then you dash cancel and go into his full combo. And he gets pretty good damage from it. So, and it, as you saw, it's also a really high damaging um, combo ender. So a lot of the time in the air, as the last part of your combo, after you've done all your extensions, you can end with it. Because it does a lot of damage, and you can cancel it off of practically anything. And it does a good chunk of damage, and that's not even its main use. Like, a lot of the time, after you've done a really long combo, and you've like ended in a wall splat, and you've done so many hits and crazy things, and you know you're going to get a meaty blow if you do anything, you can just do three hits into this, and that's a damaging way of ending any really long extended combos. But its main use is actually not what you would expect. It's actually like a dodge catcher, I guess you could say. So, I have Bakugo set on dodge. If I do this move, it catches them dodge. It has really good tracking, I guess you could say. So if I press this, and at practically any time it's gonna catch him, even if he like sidesteps right before it comes out. Okay, maybe not that, but it is very good because they, they see it coming and then they can sidestep, and if they don't do it like the frame like as it's coming out, it's gonna catch them. See that? Like he sidestepped and it still caught him. So it's really good, especially when you're um, doing your attack string. So if he's on guard, and I'm doing... Oops. <laughs> and like, you know how people always like to sidestep on your block pressure, especially when they know there's a gap? Throw in this move, and it'll catch their dodge, and then you get a full combo for like them trying to sidestep out of your combo. So usually I do this after the third hit of this combo, since it has a really big gap there. So I'll do three hits into this, and then it'll catch their dodge, and then we'll pretend he dodged, and then I've gotten this, and then it can go into his full combo, but I messed up slightly there, but you get the point. You get a combo for catching the opponent. And if you do happen to mess up and they don't sidestep, you can just quickly dash cancel it. Um, you don't get anything from a dash cancel um, on hit. But if it's unblocked, you can just quickly dash cancel and try and catch them off guard and not let them punish you. Because it is very punishable unblocked. Okay. Oh, and quick mention on his quirk um, 1, the projectiles. You're often going to be using these on your block strings when someone blocks you because it's completely safe. The second um, projectile is safe, so you're going to end with that. And then the opponent isn't going to be able to punish you. Especially if you go into something like... And you can see it's super safe and there's nothing they can do to get back in the middle. Okay, now we're into his quirk 2, which is this rapid sword strike move. It does decent damage, and that's basically its whole purpose. <laughs> like, you can use it to extend combos, and you can cancel it into your tilt quirk 1, and that's how you can get a decently long uh, combo on the ground, you do a, and you can mash it to make it longer. If you just tap it, it'll only do a few hits, ten hits. If I'm mashing vigorously, it'll do two. But you can probably get more on that at mashing. But that's how you can get really good damage on the ground. If you cancel it into your tilt quirk one, then you can have really good damage when you cancel it into your plus ultra or something if you need to be on the ground. For. Okay. Um, Obviously you can use it in the air as well, and yeah, its sole purpose is practically a combo extender. You can also cancel it into your quirk one to extend your combos that way, in the same way you did your tilt quirk one into this, into the projectiles. It works in the exact same way. So, it's much of a muchness, they do about the same damage, but you're always going to be ending your combos with this into tilt quirk one, because that's pretty good damage. Okay, now for his, oh yeah, and in the air, it's the exact same, and now for his tilt quirk 2, it is his parry. 
It, you can't do it in the air, and it's a ground parry only, like most, I believe. And, you know, it's, um, its main purpose is it's very fast, so usually you can use it in block strings, or if you, like, see your opponent doing anything, it's more of a reactionary, um, uh, parry, because it's very fast. Like, it's as fast as his block animation, like, see how fast it takes him to bring his sword up to block, it's almost instant. The same goes with his parry, so here, this is his block animation. And this is a parry. They're both very fast. Obviously, the parry is punishable if they see it, because I can't move for that whole animation after it. And so yeah, if I see Bakugo wants to go for like a yellow attack or something slow that I can react to, I can just bring this out, and it'll catch the opponent. You don't really get much off of it. You can't dash cancel. I don't think, and you don't can't cancel into quirk buttons that combo. And you can't do a plus ultra. Oh, you can dash cancel. Okay, so you can. I take everything I just said back. You can dash cancel to get a combo afterwards. And yeah, another use is Bakugo's gap here is a bit obvious, but even for some smaller gaps, you can do it just like in the middle of someone's block string, almost using it like a guard cancel of sorts. And yeah, you get combos off of it. And that's basically all of Stain's buttons. They're very good. They all have their different use. Oh, I think I forgot to talk about his red attack, actually. It's, you know, decent range. Actually, above average range, probably. It's about here. And you can get a combo with it, so, you know, it's good. <laughs> okay, now that we've gone over his buttons, we can go into his combos, which is where Stain is really, really fun. Okay, so his bread and butter combo that I usually like to do online is three hits to his tilt work one. Oops, that didn't connect. Three hits, tilt quirk one, quirk one, dash cancel, two hits, quirk one string, including the teleport, two hits, quirk two, a few hits, into the tilt quirk one, and it does about 1,200. It can do actually 1,400, just depending on how many hits of different things you get. So I'll show it again. Three hits, into quirk one, I mean, tilt quirk one, and then into these. You just don't want to do too many hits of the Quirk 2, or else it'll, it'll meet your blow early. And you won't get the combo. But yeah, that's a basic combo that you can do. You can sub out the, um, the Tilt Quirk 1 for his Quirk 2 if you want on the ground to change it up. It's a bit of a much of a muchness. It's practically the same. But uh, yeah, make sure you cancel into the Quirk 1, because that's how you're going to get good damage to end the combo. Um, he can extend his combos on the ground if, you have, if you've managed to hit him and the knife is on your opponent from the Quirk 1 string. So then you can do 3 hits into... oh, I waited too long. But essentially you can do 3 hits and then do 3 hit into the Quirk 1 and then 3 hits again. And that's how you can extend some combos on the ground, just to get a little bit extra damage. So if I do 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3... Yay, that didn't connect, I love not connecting. <laughs> and then if I cancel that a bit earlier, it's going to do about 10,400 damage, which is really good for a single dash cancel. He definitely has above average damage if you are able to hit all of his combos consistently. Which can be a bit tricky sometimes, you saw I messed it up a few times. But if you get the timing, I say the hardest part is sometimes I don't connect the three hits into the this, so you just have to make sure you cancel it really quickly. It's like even there, I thought I was doing it quick. You have to make sure you do it quick into the tilt part one. And then the rest is pretty easy. Match the quirk one button here until you see him teleport. Even if it messes up, the opponent doesn't have any time to recover. So you're practically guaranteed to get that part of it. Okay, obviously you can do it all off of his red attack as well. And so yeah, he has pretty above average damage. If you want to spend no meter, he's going to get decent damage, like 6,300. Or if you want to start your combo in the air, he can get some pretty decent meterless damage. This portion... Oopsie. Um, you can actually go into his... this. 
and then go for a little bit of a reset there. That's going to do about 900, I mean 9,000 damage, even though it didn't all connect because I'm in trading mode. But if you want to have it all connect, I'll show you what that could look like. So we can get pretty decent damage in the air for no dash against us. Okay. Now for his plus ultra one combos, I think is where I'm getting to now. So the most damage that you can do on the ground, and you need to be on the ground to get into his plus ultra, is by doing his three hits into mashes for two into hello, <laughs> into his tilt block one. And just like in One's Justice 1, he can actually combo off of his plus ultra one. So you can do another three hits into this string again. And then you've gotten an easy, like almost 13,000 damage. It could have been 13,000 if I did a few more hits of the quirk too. But still, that's really good damage for a single plus ultra. You can actually extend it a bit more if you jump. You do his air combo. And it'll all be meterless. Oops. Okay, it, a lot of things happen there, but it, that will do about 14,000. Oh, yeah. Which is really good for a, a plus ultra combo and no dash cancels. And obviously, you can do it twice if you feel like being really extra and just really <laughs> doing some weird flashy combos. Oh, no, 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 that's a meeting though. Okay. Yeah, you have to be careful of his meteor blow. Stay and has problems with meteor blows, so you need to make sure you're always wary of what you put in your combo. And I didn't have a possible. Basically, you can do it a few times, but it actually ends up doing less damage than if you just did his plus ultra 2. So, a lot of the time, I just go into the plus ultra 2, and that's easier. <laughs> Don't mess it up as often like I do when I'm recording. So I'll just show that you can have it multiple times in a combo, and you can combo... I mean, you can even do it three times if you want. I'm not even going to try again, but it gets less damage, so I suggest you just go into three hits. Not that. Into his plus ultra 2. This is going to do a big chunk of damage, and obviously it's unbreakable. Like when you're in the animation, because you can't bring out some points. And you're actually going to be able to do this a lot with Stain, especially if you're making sure not to just do crazy dash cancels. Because a lot of the time you can do no dash cancel, like if you hit them when you're in the air or something. Or, at maximum, you'll be only doing one dash cancel. Don't do anything past one dash cancel. Like, you can do some weird stuff, like in the air, with, like, four dash cancels. Like, well, everyone can do that. But then you're not going to be able to do your plus ultra 2 and plus ultra 1 combos and stuff. So yeah, make sure you're limiting yourself to one dash cancel. You almost you have a combo extender with your um like one string as well. So make sure you're just doing damage that way. He gets really good damage like if you make sure you're doing his combos right. And you can even do really good meter list stuff. And depending on what you hit. And yeah, he has really good setups and movement with the knives. And like so he can, like if your opponent's trying to stone you out and they don't really know how his knives work and they don't realize that the knives on on them or on the wall and then you zoom in like when they do a projectile and you're invincible for that whole like zoom animation by the way. So if they throw a projectile you dash in with the quirk one zoom thingy and then you can punish them for their projectile and get a full combo. No idea what's happening here. Yeah, make sure with Stain. Um, I wasn't doing it too much in this video because I want to show you his combos. But if you're ever doing a combo and I've gone like, oh, you know, I've done my dash cancel and gone into this, just if you're facing a wall, just leave it. Like if you've done your two attacks, just just end it there so that you don't have that the awkward like going into the wall and then messing up your combos and then you're like side falling on the wall together and it can be really weird. So yeah, just make sure you end it early 
so that you can get a proper combo using your wall speed. So you get really good combos off of that, because then you actually get another chance to do your uh, quirk 1 extension to the end. Usually you're only allowed to do that once. You see if I try to do it twice, it doesn't that way, it doesn't come out. But I get to do two of them if I get a wall speed, so yeah. Anyways, I think that is about all I have to say about Stain's combos. He is real- oh, um, I'll quickly get into his- some of his pressure and stuff. So I go into guarding. Obviously, um, there's a gap in between the second hit and the third hit. So after the first two hits, there's a gap in between the second and the third, and there's also a gap in between the third and the fourth. So it's a bit full of gaps for the opponent to sidestep. That's why you're going to be using this move a lot. So if you think there are really sidestep opponents that's just like mashing the sidestep button while you attack, then just go in with this, and then you will have gotten a full combo going into all your crazy stuff. Um, if your opponent is just blocking and you don't want to take the risk of going in for this because it can be a bit unsafe, even though you can dash cancel to try and make it safer, there is still a gap that they can punish you in. If you want to just play it safe on block, you can do a few hits into this quirk 1. This is quirk 1. String is safe, unusually, especially if you do like, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. like three hits into the armor move, into the quirk 2, into quirk 1, then you are absolutely safe, and you've done a lot of pressure and guard destruction. 